As I compete in more time attack events through the years, I learn more about the setup on my car and different ways to dial it in to help my car go faster. One of the most important setup changes you can make is with your suspension. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know to get your coilovers set up properly on your car. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my suspension on my Time Attack Civic to go as fast as absolutely possible. And the first step in doing that is selecting the right coilovers. So today we're here at Fortune Auto to pick up the coilovers for the Civic. Let's get started. So this is our Pro 2-Way Dreadnought external reservoir, 24 clicks of damping adjustment, compression adjustment over here. Rebound over here, uh, you have two pistons. You have a piston in the canister itself, and you also have our CFD piston in the shock itself. And this is gonna be the best choice for your class, for what you're running in your vehicle. So, this is yours. Mm. Hmm? <laughs> Before we take my coilovers back to the shop, let's talk about the different coilover options that there are. Each brand will typically have a lineup of budget-friendly coilovers up to the highest motorsport-grade coilover. Fortune Auto has four primary options, 500s, 510s, 520s, and the Pro 2-Way Dreadnoughts. And that brings us to springs, which there's obviously a couple different options. Fortune Auto offers Hyperco, Swift, and their own Fortune Auto in-house brand. The difference between the three is basically name recognition and brand. I'm going with the Swift for my option. It's got a little bit less tightly packed uh, spring coils, which makes it a little bit lighter, which should give me a little bit of a faster reactionary movement on the coilovers. The Hyperco Springs have a little bit of an F1 background, so it's got a nice name uh, recognition, branding behind that, and the Fortune Autos look really nice because they're silver, which I, I like that color tone. But uh, <laughs> to each their own between the springs, there are honestly quite a minor difference between the three. The biggest difference when it comes to springs is gonna be your spring rate. So this spring here is an 18K spring rate, and this one is 6K. So obviously, you can see the difference. These coils are a lot fatter than these coils. And that just means that it can support more weight being pushed on it than this one. Your heavier cars are generally going to run a heavier spring rate. Your lighter cars are going to run lighter spring rate. But every car is different and setting up your spring rates can be quite time consuming in itself. These are the pistons that are inside of Fortune Auto's coilovers. This is the piston for the 500s, 510s, and this is for the external reservoirs on the dreadnoughts. The difference between these three is how the fluid flows around the outside. They call it the flow digressive technology, and that's Fortunato's patented technology, which gives it a nice digressive curve, which we'll talk about in a minute. So this is a cutaway of what the inside of Fortunato's coilovers look like. You can see the piston here, and there's fluid below and above that piston. And as your car is going up and down the road, that piston is moving up and down, moving fluid up and down between the two. We know what rate it's moving up and down between the two based on our shock dyno graph, and that's different for every coilover. This is what makes coilovers different, better or worse than others, in addition to the build quality, spring rates, spherical bushings, and all of that. A lot that goes into this. The largest difference between coilovers is their compression and rebound damping control. Compression is the rate that the strut will allow the spring to compress, and rebound is the opposite, the amount that will allow the spring to decompress or rebound. It sounds pretty simple, but it actually gets a lot more complicated. The compression and damping on a coilover work at different rates depending on the velocity in which it is being forced with. A low speed velocity would typically be when a car is slowly leaning over, into a corner, brakes, or on the gas. High speed velocity are bumps in the road or curbing on the outside of the track. The compression and rebound will act stronger on higher speed velocity movements. With most coilovers, you can adjust these movements with the turn of a dial. On a single way adjustable coilover like this Fortunato 500, there's adjustment on the bottom between hard and soft, and that'll do compression and rebound together. On a two way adjustable coilover, you have compression separate from rebound in two different locations. Then there's also three way adjustable coilovers that has high speed and low speed compression, but we won't get into that. The beauty of Fortune Auto coilovers is that they have a concave flow digressive valving, which means that the compression and rebounds aren't linear with the velocity curve. Take a look at this graph and I'll show you what I mean. The 500s have a more linear curve for compression and rebound. The higher the velocity, the higher the rate. But with the 510s and up, they're more digressive, meaning that the compression and rebound rates aren't as linear with the velocity. And when you get to the Pro 2 ways, you have even more range of adjustment between the high speed and low speed velocity sections. With the digressive damper, it's easier to get enough damping for your car to feel stable and reactive during low velocity inputs, when you're cornering, braking, and accelerating. But it's not too much damping that when you drive over curbs and hit bumps that the chassis is upset and difficult to drive. But enough about damper control, let's get these coilovers installed so I can show you how to set them up.
So I'm disconnecting the front and rear sway bar because the sway bars can impact the numbers and corner rating and stuff that we're gonna do in the future, as well as some of the droop travel stuff. So we're gonna remove the front and rear sway bar to make sure that doesn't factor into any of our mathematical equations, and then we'll reconnect it once we're done with everything. The first step is actually quite simple. It's just setting the ride height. And luckily for us, since we had coilovers on the car before, it's pretty easy. We can just match the same heights that the old coilovers had and then throw them in. Something to consider when you're setting your ride height is the suspension geometry of your car. Generally, it's set up for your factory ride height. So if you lower a car too much, you could throw your suspension geometry out of, out of balance. And what I mean is basically the toe curve when the wheel is going up and down in the compression and droop travel of the suspension, the wheel is actually curving in and out of toe as it's moving up and down. The roll center and toe curve or bump steer of your car is affected by its ride height. So both roll center and bump steer need to be addressed when lowering your car. And fixing the roll center generally makes bump steer worse. So when buying any roll center correction kits, you'll also wanna buy a bump steer correction kit as well. Basically, when you lower your car, you don't wanna do it too much unless you have some roll center correction to correct the suspension geometry of your car, which I've got here with the extended ball joints and adjustable tie rods. I've done all the math on mine to make sure that my toe curve is right on where it needs to be for the ride height that my car is set at. Now that we have ride height roughly where you want it, this is where most people would normally stop this process, but not you, because we're gonna continue getting this thing set up right, and it's gonna take a lot more to do that. The next step is gonna be removing the spring to get the bump stop set correctly. So let's jack this thing back up and take the spring off. Since we have the ride height set, we're gonna lock this collar down before we remove the spring. That way we know the ride height will be where it was when we left it. So now we have to take the coil apart so that we can put it back together with no spring on it, reinstall it on the car, and then compress the wheel all the way up and find out where it makes contact with the chassis. And we wanna make sure that the bump stop in the coil contacts before the tire contacts the chassis. This is the bump stop that's inside the coil. It's usually hidden underneath this dust boot. And this is what you want to actually bottom out before the, the coil completely hits the bottom. This is the fun part where we make the car look like a stance car. We're gonna raise this wheel up by the control arm so that we can still spin the wheel around. And we're gonna find out what contacts first, the tire against the chassis or the bump stop on the coilover. So it looks like in this case, the bump stop is hitting before the tire is contacting, which is a good thing, but we do still have a little bit more room for the tire to go up. So we're gonna lower the bump stop down further. We want it to be pretty close to even. We want the bump stop to hit first still, but we still have a lot more room for this wheel to go up into the fender. So we're gonna lower the coil shock body down. That way the wheel can go up higher before the bump stop hits. You can see at the top of the chassis here where the tire is normally contacting the chassis and we're still about an inch away from that. So we're gonna lower the shock body by almost an inch, not quite a full inch. And that should bring that up a lot higher before the bump stop hits. To adjust where the bump stop engages, we're gonna move the shock within the body of the coilover. So the coilover sleeve for the spring and the bottom perch, we wanna make sure it has the same distance between each other, that way the ride height stays the same. All we're doing is moving the shock body within the coilover itself, that way it bottoms out at a different point. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this bottom collar and count how many turns, and I'm gonna count the same number of turns for the top collar and just shift everything up and then I'm gonna move the body down. other way yeah it's contacting there too that's not good the tire contacting the chassis like that when you're correcting a slide or something if the tire contacts the chassis it could snap the car the opposite direction and send you into a wall ask me how i know okay the suspension is at full compression and as you can see the tire is not contacting anywhere which is good because obviously you don't want it to contact under full compression now before we lower it down we're going to measure the distance where it's at currently to the distance it's at at full droop and we're going to need that measurement for later that's going to be the full suspension travel distance and we're going to want that and you're going to know why later okay so the distance between the top of the spring perch and the bottom spring perch is five and one eighth of an inch we'll need that information for later
Okay, now that we have the bump stop set, we need to set our compression and droop travel. Basically, we want the compression to be 50% of the travel and the droop to be the other 50%. So right now, the car is at full droop, meaning the suspension is fully extended, which is down here. Full compression would be up here, so where we measured before when the, the coilover was all the way up on the bump stop, that's full compression. Right in between is the ride height. That's where the car is sitting at normally. So when it's compressing, it's going up into that full compression. When it's drooping, it's coming down. So we want that to be about 50-50. Okay, so we have the car sitting at ride height now by uh, jacking up this corner. We do have the sway bar disconnected and the distance between the fender and the wheel, it's right on the money, five and a half inches uh, at ride height. So that means it'll be about two inches of compression, two inches of droop, which is a perfect 50-50 ratio. We could tuck it up a little bit higher, but I think I'm pretty happy with that for now. It's kind of a shame because there's already a huge fender gap as it is. Unfortunately, Civics just weren't meant for big wheels and this is the ride height I have to have. I can't tub my frame in this class to make it go any lower. So this is we're gonna have to deal with, but I know that my suspension geometry is gonna be perfect. And the last corner sits at three and a half inches. Full compression is two. So that is one and a half inches of compression and two inches of droop. We've got a little bit less suspension travel in the back, but that's still well within the, a good range. 40, 60 is still a safe range. And uh, I like that amount of compression. That's pretty good. So we've got roughly 1.5 inches of compression all the way around and a good amount of droop all the way around. So I think we're good with the compression droop ratio. The next step is gonna be corner balancing. So to my surprise, the corner balance actually turned out almost perfect. It is 800, 813 pounds in the left and 811 pounds on the right. The rear left is a little heavier than the rear right. We could adjust that a little bit, but I mean, we're talking like 10, 20 pounds. That's really close. Uh, so we're not gonna get too in depth into corner balancing in this video. There's tons of resources out there about corner balancing specifically. I think we've even made videos about it in the past. So I'm not gonna get too in depth about this, but for our purposes right now, our corner balance is just about perfect. With the coilovers properly set, now we can put the sway bars back on and give the car an alignment. All right, well, the car is out of the garage after a few days of getting this thing set up, but we're not actually done yet because the last step is arguably the most important and that's dialing it in, which you kind of need to go to the track for, feel it out, set your compression and rebound. And it's gonna be different for every track and different for every car. So you can't really just set it up based on numbers and math. You've got to actually go out to the track. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're taking this to the next Grid Life event, which is in New Jersey, Motorsports Park. And we're gonna get the suspension dialed in. I think that's gonna do it for this video. There's a ton of resources out there if you wanna learn more about this. I kind of just glazed over the surface. Take a look in the description. I've left some links in there for uh, a little bit more technical resources if you really wanna look into this further. But as for me in this car, we're hitting the track. <laughs>